You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Drone You podcast <laughs> with your host, Robin Paul. Yeah. I I can't follow that, but I can just welcome you. No, we're not going to start number 360. Yes, we are. We're rolling with this, Paul. You started it, and you're going to live with it. So thank you, everybody, for being a part of this podcast. We really, really appreciate it. Danke schön. <laughs> Holy cow, you're going to scare the crap out of people driving down the road. <laughs> Anyways. What if I was just that smiling kid, and I grew my hair out, and then like put buns on the side of my head? It was just like, Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That'd be weird. Be yeah, I probably wouldn't be working here anymore. So uh, anyway. Oh, wow. Welcome right. to another show. We yeah, are full welcome. of energy here at Drone U. Digging deep. We are digging deep because we got a question. I've mm-hmm. got a budget. I need to buy a drone. Yep. What's the best drone for that budget? That's right. And no. did, So well, here's his question here. But did he say Adani? Is that how he said his name? We'll have to listen again and check it out. We will. It's kind of a cool name. We will. Anyway, let's get right into today's question. We're going to be comparing drones within a certain price range today. What's the best drone for photography? What is the best drone for videography? You may be surprised by what I say. But probably not. we found some very interesting <laughs> information out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Well, Rob's going to do the whole thing. So uh, let's play the question brought to you by Legal Flyer. Are you a drone pilot? Are you operating under a Section 333 exemption? Then you may be familiar with Item 27, which requires you to get a property release for every flight over property. Legal Flyer is an app for iPhone and iPad that helps you create professional property releases in less time than it takes to do a pre-flight check. You can add your pilot info, you can sign in, hand it to the property owner for their signature. But wait a second. Legal Flyer's advanced integration automatically adds latitude, longitude, and even altitude. Then add a panorama straight from the app. Everything drops into a single page PDF you can share with a single tap. It's compliance at light speed. Visit LegalFlyer.com for more information or get it straight from the app store. Legal Flyer, property releases for professional drone pilots. Hey guys, my name is Adani Edmund, and I had a drone question related to cameras. Uh, in terms of all the 4K drones in the 700 to 1700 dollar price bracket, which one do you think would have would be the best for photography and videography? Uh, right now, I'm looking at the Typhoon H, the Auto Robotics 4K drone, and the Phantom 4. And I just want to know in terms of stuff like bit rate, uh, sensor size, uh, viewing angle, uh, camera features, like which one do you guys think would be the best? Uh, if you will just need a drone to just take good video and good photography. Ah. Well, Rob, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy a Phantom 4. Okay, well, now that that's out there. Um... <laughs> no, I, I don't know what I'd buy. I'm just kidding. I'd buy a Sima. All right, Paul. What's up? No, no, I'm no, no. Really, let's help. I want to know let's your opinion on this. Um, anyway, great question. I don't think it's a simple answer, though, Rob, because f- what I have been finding in flying the Phantom Four, in flying the Phantom Three, in flying the Inspire One, is that the best photos actually come out of the Phantom Four, even the long exposure photos, even photos in general. You're getting a lot more clarity than even the Phantom 3 uh, and the Inspire 1. But I would say that video out of the Inspire 1 is much better than the Phantom 4 or Phantom 3. Um, you know, he brought an interesting point up, Rob. Mm-hmm. He said 700 to 1700 price range. Right. That's $199 out of, out of reach of the Inspire 1. Is it really, though? I don't think it's out of reach. No, no, okay. I, I'm sure you could get one used. I don't recommend buying used, but you could get one used uh, through B&H or somewhere for probably about 1500 now. Um, but, you know, it's an interesting question because so many people say, oh, I want to spend $1,000 on a drone. What can I get for that price point? When you don't consider buying a case to protect it, um, 
batteries to continue flying, uh, extra props in case you break one. You know, there's there's a lot of extra. Or when you break one. When you break one. Pretty much. Um, let Rob broke one just a little while ago. Um, anyway, <laughs> not talking about props here, talking about drones. There is a lot of cost that goes into this right. besides the drone. Absolutely. Um, but we're going to answer the question of if we have this price point and this price range, which drone are we going to get? The unique Typhoon H falls into that price range. The Inspire 1 uh, is just outside of that price range. Phantom 4 is inside of that price range. Phantom 3 Pro is inside of that price range. And the Autel Robotics is inside of that price range. You know, something our, our intern brought up is that mm -hmm. it's not always about the camera. Sometimes you got to focus on endurance or flight time, mm -hmm. payload capacity, but also flexibility. In flexibility, I mean the ability to buy a drone and change the camera over time. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. So, Which is hard to do on the DJI stuff, right? Unless Except the Inspire, I the, guess. The Inspire is a good platform. Mm -hmm. I think the M600 would kind of be that ultimate platform. A little bit beyond his price range. Way beyond his price range. Um, but, you know, it, I thought I would just mention it. Anyway. Sure. Uh, so he, t he talked about the bit rate between cameras, right? The Inspire 1 has a 60 megabit per second video bit rate. The unique Typhoon H dun, 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 has a hundred <laughs> megabit per second 4K video. Okay, so you're getting a little bit more depth there mm -hmm. in your uh, in your video. Phantom Four, same as the Inspire One, 60 megabits per second. Uh, you know, I do want to remind people that the lens is really the only difference in camera, like in the entire camera system, on the Phantom Four. From the Phantom 3, the lens is really the only difference. Okay. Um, that being said, if he's asking what's the best drone for photography, Phantom 4, in my opinion, hands down. Over the Inspire. Over the Inspire. Okay. Over the Unique. You know, the Unique is going to be cheaper for him to buy. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a tablet included in the remote, and he could get better video out of it than, say, an Inspire 1. Okay. Here's the here is where my main concern would be. Flight time. I haven't had the chance to test out the Typhoon H. We get to do that in fact tomorrow when you hear this podcast air, we're actually going to be doing the test tomorrow. Um and we get that opportunity to truly test, you know, its flight time, its capability, what can it really do, sure. what can it really film. We're really excited about that and special thanks to Trent Sigurd who has set that up. We really appreciate it. Um but as far as you know, if we're going based off of camera here, I'm, I'm going to say that the Typhoon H is pushing some better specs. Mm -hmm. um, I personally use the Inspire 1 uh, just because it's more flexible for me. Right. I can travel with it very easily. I know you can do that with the Typhoon H as well. But my issue, too, is staying up in the air for long periods of time. Sure. And the Inspire 1 has a 6S battery instead of the Typhoon H has a 4S battery. Which translates into how much time? That it's not really a direct translation into time. It's really a direct translation into available voltage. So on an Inspire battery, we're pushing 22 to 24 volts. On a 4S battery, we're going to be pushing between 14 and 17 volts. So the available power is less, meaning that if, if we're running six motors on a 4S battery, we're going to be drawing a lot more amperage than if we were using a 6S battery. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. So... There is kind of a correlation to flight time. Yeah, you're going to get less flight time. But I have never gotten 25 minutes on my Inspire 1 ever, 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 ever. I've gotten maybe like 21. Right. But that was at sea level, and I was not really flying around very much. Is there going to be a trade-off between pushing the resources to run six bat to run six motors, but those motors maybe aren't working as hard because it's got six of them instead of only four of them? That is correct, yes. Um, but also, the benefit of the Typhoon H is the safety aspect. You know, you could literally lose a motor and mm -hmm. bring it to the ground. Right. It's not going to fly like you think it's going to, but it is totally possible to bring it to the ground safely. Right. So there is that aspect and that factor as well. Um, so how does the P3... P stand up to uh, the P3 Pro. The P3 Pro stand up to all of this. P3 Pro is four hundred bucks cheaper than the Phantom Four, and is about three hundred bucks cheaper than the unique Typhoon H, as the basic platform goes. Mm -hmm. Um, 
the Phantom 3 takes better photos than the Inspire one. Okay. If anyone wants to argue that, we'll send you some photos and show you. Um, I mean, it really does take better images. Even Sam and I have gone out and discovered this, um, e- especially the long exposure. Uh, I mean, it's just so much better on the Phantom 3 Pro. So if we're talking to it on, and he's, you know, the $1,700 price range is the very top limit, and he absolutely does not want to go over that. And we understand that he needs to buy accessories and batteries and cases. Maybe the Phantom 3 Pro is the best option because of what he can get for the money. Or I know you like to just tell people, and it makes sense, I understand why. No, just save a little bit more money and then do this. I am one to say that Mm because that's what I've done myself. Um, You know, one of the questions that he had asked was, what's the best sensor size? What's the best drone for photography? What's the best drone for videography? If we are not moving past the $1,700 price point, the best drone for photography is the Phantom 4. Okay. And I would say the best drone for videography would be the unique Typhoon H. Hmm. Okay. So wow. that's if we are sticking All to that price point. Typhoon people out there, <laughs> I want to hear the good comments because of that comment. Rob reads all your negative comments, unique people. So <laughs> That's right. <laughs> make it a unique day and leave us some positive comments. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, if, if he were to move that price point up to two grand, I would say the Inspire 1, hands down, no questions asked. Yeah, even though the photography is better with the P4. Yeah. There's just, okay. Because of this simple reason, on a unique Typhoon H and on an Inspire 1, you have articulating arms. Mm-hmm. So you have right. arms that are so far above the camera, yeah. they're never going to enter the picture. With a Phantom 4, if you're doing video, they're going to enter the picture, and mm-hmm. you're going to have to crop down for that. Right. Um, also, you're going to be very limited in the winds you can fly. You know, Unique is known to be a little underpowered. Again, we haven't tested the Unique Typhoon H. Um, it, when I was at NAB, though, it sounded very different from their other, other products. It, it had more power. Mm. It looked like. Uh, again, we haven't tested it. We will tomorrow. That being said, uh, if we're taking just the fact of how many days out of the year can we fly, you're going to want to go with the Hexacopter or you're going to want to go with the Inspire 1 if you are turning this into a business. You just need that power. So that's speaking to the viewing angle a little bit that he asked about? No, that isn't. Well, I mean, the viewing angle is really the field of view. So, you know, all the drones are wide angle. Um, All of them are. The Phantom 4, though, has a little bit narrower field of view than the Phantom 3. Uh, Hmm. and the Inspire 1. So, and I noticed this when we were out taking photos the other day, the Inspire 1 photos were here and the Phantom 4 photos were here. So, um, I forgot to write down the exact angle of the field of view. I think it's 94 degrees on the Inspire 1. Um, Okay. But uh, as far as field of view goes, (sighs) these are all just so similar. And what about features? Are they going to be relatively similar with features? The unique Typhoon H actually has more autonomous features than the Inspire 1 or the Phantom 4. Hmm. Um, the Phantom, well, actually, the Phantom 4 kind of runs very, very closely to the Typhoon H. But the Typhoon H, you know, has curved cam. It's like a cable cam, but it's curved. Mm-hmm. So it's not like the Solo where it's just a couple points and you're going between, right. you know, straight lines. This is actually like organic shapes and lines, which I think is really cool. That is cool. Um, also, they've got, you know, a team controller mode. So you have, like, the Inspire 1 kind of dual op mode. Um, you've got the orbit mode, the point of interest, the selfie style cam, the cable cam, the follow me, the dynamic re- return to home on the Typhoon H. So you really have a lot. A lot of those autonomous features, too, you know, are comparable to the Phantom 4 autonomous features. Sure. But Phantom 4 has tap fly. It has active track. So you can make a box around someone and follow them. Um, and, th- and that's really cool. So That is cool. There's, you know, it, it is a tough race right now. If I were making this decision based off of I needed a good all-in-one drone that I could take anywhere with me and have minimal regulatory issues and have maximum flight time, I would go with the Phantom 4 simply because of the battery technology and mm. how much that has changed since the Phantom 3. Cool. I call it the sponge battery. Have you seen one? I have seen one. They're pretty cool. It's still fascinating how they did that. It really is fascinating. Yeah. But anyway, I hope that answers your question. Thank you for the question. (sighs) Yeah, thank you. I feel like I've been talking way too long. Anyway, if this podcast has been helping you out, please leave us a review. I can't ask that enough. If you want to help our podcast out just a little bit, please leave us a review. We really, really appreciate it. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone You. 
We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We reject indecision, confusion, and vanity, for they work against the community. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.